Little wins, right? Yeah. I did it, and there's Tom. Secret play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. In part one of this build video, we took a look at what's inside the box of the Multiplex Twin Star 2 plane and compared the wingspan to that of the Skywalker plane. It's a little shorter. Then we took a look at the fuselage and what's inside that, the decals, and the canopy for the plane. Then we got ready to install the brushless motors that we're using to replace the brush motors that came in the kit and we're going to mount them on some homemade PVC pipe motor mounts. So what I've done here, you probably see this fitting I've got on here I'm using for a motor mount. What that is, it's actually an inch and a quarter PVC plug. What I did was I took the motor mount that came with the motor and just used that as a template to drill the holes like that. So I won't be using this motor mount and then I just take the motor and uh, screw it right to the plug right there with some these are some screws that actually came with a quadcopter they're uh, mm -hmm. machine screws the motor is now glued in with my handy dandy silicon RTV glue here that you can get from your hardware it's just clear silicon and I clamped it overnight right here and you can see where the PVC end plug is now glued in. You can see the silicon glue on there. I put some underneath it and along the sides and now it's firmly cemented in there. You can see how that shaft has a little bit of down angle to it. Which I believe is right. Now I'm not sure I'm right about the silicon glue. You may want to use the CA that's recommended for this Elipor plastic foam. But I did do a little test with the silicon. And here it is on some of the Elipor foam. And you can see it's stuck very good. I believe it'll hold two pieces together all right. But if you try hard enough, you can peel it back. And eventually you can pull it off like that. So I'm not recommending you use it. Uh, I've used it but we'll see what happens. You, I'll be the test bed. Now here is some Gorilla Glue that I put on the Elipore and you can see that also peels off. It took a little foam with it, but like most glues, including the silicon, if you have two pieces laid on top of each other, gluing two pieces together, either of these glues will probably work, but you can peel them off. Now here is some welders. That's this stuff here, welder glue. And I put that on there, and you can see that that really bonds. And if I try to pull it off there, it's very difficult, but eventually, this is like shoe glue, so it pretty much sticks to anything. So I got it off, finally, and you can see on the foam, it has indented the foam a little bit, so it does react with the foam somewhat, so you don't want to put too thick a layer on. If you use a thin layer, it'll be just fine for gluing this foam. So there's three types of glue. What the book recommends is CA, you know, foam safe CA and kicker and that's pretty much all they recommend. You know what, before I put in my ESC's I think I'm going to go ahead and glue the wing together. So I'm going to put the wing spar in. I made sure that I knew where this little filler piece goes. It has a little plug right here that goes right there. So I put some marks to allow for that plug to fit in there. So I need to glue the spar right there. Alright, I'm just putting a bead of glue down in this trough right here where the spar is going to go. Doing that for the, for the full length. Alright, now I'm just pressing 
the spar down into the glue, making sure it's behind that mark. And then I'm just going to rub off any excess glue so that the cap will still fit. Here's the cap right here and you can see how that little piece goes in front of the spar and it fits in like this. But I'm not going to leave the cap in while it's drying. I'm just test fitting here to make sure it will go in. Alright, now on this end I'm just going to lay a, a bottle of <laughs> Gorilla Glue there for a weight just to hold the spar in. And then at the other end I'm going to put a clamp on. like that. The wing spar has dried overnight and now it's really on there. You can see I can move it up and down like this and it is good and stuck. Next job I'll put some silicon glue in the trough on this wing right here and at the ends right in here and then clamp it together with this clamp. So here is the wing drying and I've got a number of clamps on here. I've got one at this end of the spar and then one in the middle that's to hold this part down while it glues. This side is already dried of course. And then I've got clamps at the uh, aft here in the fore just to keep the wing even. And uh, underneath I just have some 2x4s. Uh, it's resting on some 2x4s right there. So hopefully that will dry. It will probably take about half a day to dry. So I think you can see there's quite a bit of dihedral on that wing and that's what we want to get just right with our clamps. Make sure everything is nice and even. Okay the wing is now dry and it's pretty strong Here's the spar in here glued in with a silicon RTV cement. And John can even hold just one side of the wing and move it up and down. You can see it's plenty it's strong. A bit too. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is uh, glue on these little keepers here where the screws go to uh, fasten it down to the fuselage. So I'm going to glue that in there and clamp it and use silicon glue again. I've got some paper in the hole there to keep the silicon from coming through where the screw goes. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put silicon over this whole area here. Down in there too where the peg goes. Both sides. Basically like that. That ought to be plenty enough. Now I'm just going to press this in and we'll go ahead and clamp it on there. Take one of these clamps and I'm going to clamp it. So there's the clamp on there and I'm just going to rub off any excess silicon glue. And that makes a good seal there. And we'll just do the other one and let them both dry. So although this wing is glued very firmly with silicon glue in the motors too, I'm still not going to make a recommendation to use that because uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I'll probably put the caps over the spar with CA just to give me some added strength in case the silicon lets loose. But as far as I know it'll work. And like I said, I'll be the test bed and we'll find out. Okay, so next we're installing the wing retainer screw plate right here that the screw goes into to hold the wing. And that comes in two halves and we're just going to CA the two halves together using the CA right here to uh, glue the two halves. So I'm just going to apply some silicone to one half of this and then uh, push it into the fuselage like that. So the wing retainers 
and the wing retainer screw plates are now drying. Silicone glue. Okay, all done, ready to fly. All right, just kidding. That's a twin star wing on a Skywalker body. So servos are next. I've decided to use these. I got these at a local hobby store and these are high tech. And I figured I would use these uh, 82 Metal Gear servos for the ailerons and the elevator and then I was going to put this 81 on the rudder. So you can let me know what you think about that. So this is a 7x4 prop. I'm actually thinking of using 7x5 but I'm going to have to order two counter-rotating APC 7x5s. But they'll look something like that. Okay, lots of work to do for the next video. We've got to get these servos installed and the ESCs installed and of course I'm going to have to put in a receiver hook in some batteries oh I got to get these ailerons and other control surfaces hinged and ready to go and put in my control rods to get this thing ready for a test flight so I'm on RC groups here looking at the Eagle Tree Vector flight controller uh, this flight controller has been recommended by at least three people three of my viewers so I'm taking a serious look at it and I may be switching to this for this project. So if any of you can tell me where I can get a good price on this and what I need to order with it, that would be a big help. For example, I think I need an airspeed sensor and that doesn't come with a package, so any recommendations on that would be good. And anything else I might need to hook it up. I'll probably be using the Easy UHF receiver, for example, so Hopefully that will work with this. Uh, <clears throat> so anything you can tell me, let me know in the comments under the video. And uh, we'll see if we can get this project rolling. Take your plate.